Hi, I'm Noah Slocum, and I'm a product engineer on the ArcGIS GeoAnalytics Server team. Today, I'll be showing you a demo of how GeoAnalytics Server can crunch through 55 million points in just 12 minutes. If you aren't familiar with GeoAnalytics Server, it's a server role of ArcGIS Enterprise designed to process and analyze large amounts of data faster than you would be able to do on a typical desktop. In addition to the speed of analysis, Another value of GeoAnalytics is that it can find the proverbial needle in the haystack. It can detect patterns, trends, and anomalies in otherwise noisy data sets in order to help you make better business decisions. Today's analysis will use a tool unique to GeoAnalytics called Detect Incidents. We'll run the analysis against a collection of ground-level ozone measurements accumulated by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency over the course of the past six years. Now, why are we looking at ground-level ozone? Well, high ground-level ozone has many negative repercussions for air quality and human health. And in 2015, the EPA ruled that ozone measurements over 70 parts per billion could exasperate those effects. In addition, it's required that a public warning is issued if this threshold is exceeded on average for eight hours or more. In this analysis, we want to find locations in the US where ground level ozone has reached or exceeded 70 parts per billion on average for eight hours or more. This spatial analysis will be valuable as we can then share our results with the city and regional stakeholders to increase awareness and action around reducing activity that contributes to high ground level ozone. To do this without geoanalytics would require some pretty hefty queries on our 55 million data points and multiple processing steps. However, in GeoAnalytics, we can use just an arcade expression to parse through and identify data that meets these conditions. First, let's take a quick look at the data. Our data spans six years and is stored in six separate CSVs in an Amazon S3 bucket. GeoAnalytics is going to read directly from these CSVs without any pre-processing needed. In our data, we have about 300 static sensor locations that have been taking hourly ozone measurements for the past six years. In total, we've accumulated 55 million records that we want to mine through. For this analysis, we're going to be using a GeoAnalytics server deployment with three machines and a total of 18 cores and 72 gigabytes of RAM available across my deployment for analysis. Let's start the demo. You'll see I've copied our input data to the spatiotemporal big data store as a feature service so that we can visualize it. Each of these green point locations you see on the map are EPA air quality sensors that we have data for. If I click on one of these locations, you'll see that there are actually 1,969 ozone readings at this one location. All in all, our data set has over 55 million readings and the attribute table contains things like the site number ID for each sensor, latitude, longitude, and the sample measurement, which is in this case ozone in parts per million. We'll use all these attributes in our analysis. So if I go up and click on the analysis button, because my enterprise is enabled with GeoAnalytics server, my GeoAnalytics tools show up automatically. I can then browse to the detect incidents tool and this tool will take our input data and tie it together into time series using a common identifier. In this case, we're going to use the site number of our air quality sensors to tie our input data together. Now we're going to build an arcade expression to specify what we want to be defined as an incident. Here I'm specifying that if this value for the sample measurement field is on average above 70 parts per billion for over eight hours, we'll mark that feature as an incident. This expression will be evaluated for every feature in our data set. I can choose to write out all features in my result specified as an incident or not, or to only write out incidents, and we'll choose that option for this example. When I click the Run Analysis button, this analysis job is sent to my GeoAnalytics server cluster, and the computation is distributed across the 18 cores I have available in my cluster. We've cut out some of the processing time, but that job took about 12 minutes to run, 
And if I disable time animation, we'll see all of the results at once. So here, you'll see we have some of our uh, the, the same sensor locations that we saw before, but our data set has now been pared down to about 39,000 features. All these features meet our incident criteria. So now we can enable time animation and symbolize how the frequency of high ozone incidents changes throughout the country and over time. Using the time slider, I'll scan through different segments of time. And we'll see that in the spring and summer months, there are high frequency of ozone events um, in urban areas. However, if we scan through the winter months, we'll see an anomaly of a high ozone incident frequency near Salt Lake City. Because we have six years of data, we can scan through and see if this anomaly persists each winter. Using GeoAnalytics Server, we were able to see and understand six years of data and over 55 million point features in just 12 minutes. By being able to rapidly analyze this data, we now have more time to act upon the results and share them with others to affect change around reducing ozone levels. Since this analysis is run in just a few minutes, we can iterate on it frequently to see if conditions are changing and even look at analyzing even more historical data or different sensor reads. We hope you found this demo to be useful in thinking about how you can use GeoAnalytics to analyze your larger data sets, find actionable results, and make data-driven decisions faster. For more information about GeoAnalytics Server, head to esri.com forward slash geoanalytics. Also check out the description in this video for a link to the EPA datasets, as well as the arcade expression we used in case you want to try out the demo for yourself. Thanks for watching.